National Endowment for the Arts, and by the Chubb Group of Insurance Companies, for over 100 years providing business and personal insurance worldwide through independent agents and brokers. Kirkman, age six. I love mommy because she makes me peanut butter and banana sandwiches on Wonder Bread, and it tastes better than when I order at a restaurant. And mommy never looks at me funny the way waiters in restaurants do. And mommy crushes aspirin and mixes them into jelly when I get sick. Because I can't swallow aspirin. They just sit in my tongue and wait for me to finish the whole glass of water, and then I spit them out. When they're mixing the jelly, I hardly have any problem at all. I just eat the jelly and feel better. And Mommy washes my clothes for me, so I don't have to. And she does it so they all smell nice when they come out. They come out smelling clean. And they even smell a little like Mommy because she folds them for me and her smell rubs off onto my shirts. Mommy smells like perfume. Not really sweet like Billy Corkscrow's mother. Mommy smells like she's getting ready to go out to dinner. And Mommy's read every book in the library downstairs. I couldn't do that. She can read three books in a week with no trouble at all. And real books, not the Hardy Boys. Mommy's really smart. She can read and take care of me. Both. That's why I love Mommy. I'm gonna miss my bus. Is my lunch ready? All set. Bye, Mommy. Mm -hmm. Bye, Wallace. I love the second grade. Don't shout, Wallace.
Mommy, I'm home. Cremate the parasite. Here you are. Your teacher gave me this gift for you. It's not my birthday. Well, something bad happened to you. And when something bad happens, you get gifts to make you feel better. <laughs> Why do I get gifts on my birthday? Well, you're a year older. Being a year older isn't bad. It adds up. Here, open your gift. It's a peanut brittle. Oh, isn't that lovely? I hate peanut brittle. So do I. Don't forget to send your teacher a thank you note. Why should I send her something? I see her every day. So give her a thank you note. But I hate peanut brittle. So throw it at her during the Pledge of Allegiance. You must acknowledge the gift. It's good manners. Okay. She's a very pretty woman. I guess so. Why aren't you downstairs? There's too many people. Why'd they all come back home with us? I don't know. They didn't get enough grief out, maybe. I think they just like free food. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> They're all bunched together like a big black cloud of perfume and cologne, munching on little corned beef sandwiches. Horrible. What's that? This? Yeah. It's a photograph of your mother. The last one, as far as I know. Your father took it um, six days ago. I wanted to have it. I wish Mommy would come back. I know, Wallace. But for whatever reason, she wanted to go. She didn't want to. Hmm? What? She didn't want to, Grandma. I know she didn't. Mm. A pirate came in and slit her throat. And he took everything inside of her. He put it in a sack and he escaped the kitchen door. She didn't want to go. And if I'd been here, if I pretended I was sick and stayed home, I could have saved her. No, you couldn't have. Don't think you could have saved her because I'm telling you, you couldn't have. Nobody could have saved her. It was time for her to go. And someday it'll be time for me to go, too. And one day it'll be... Your time to go. Not me. I'm going to live forever. Oh, I wish you luck. You would be the first person to do that. I'm going to. If anybody can, Wallace, I'm sure it'll be you. And I'm going to find the pirate who did this. Wait and see. I will, Wallace. I certainly will. You look very handsome in your suit.
Hi, Victoria. Can I sit down? Free country. What you got for lunch? Peanut butter and banana. Oh, I want to trade? What do you have? Tuna? No, thanks. Besides, I already ate some of mine. Peanut butter and banana is my favorite. Bet it's good. It kind of sucks. My dad made it. Dads can't make lunch. You can barely taste the banana. I'm sorry about your mother. Yeah. Me too. She killed herself? Told you that. I don't know somebody. She didn't kill herself. A pirate slit her throat. I think. I haven't finished checking things out yet. Uh-uh, that's not what they said. They said suicide. Who cares? I don't know. <sighs> Kirkman, age 13. It's past four in the morning, and I can't sleep. I go downstairs to get something to drink, maybe see what's on television. I open the refrigerator and take out some orange juice. I drink orange juice because I'm susceptible to colds, and because I heard the Coke rots your teeth. Whether it does or not makes no difference, because after you hear something like that, it stays in your brain. So I pour some orange juice into a glass, and I put the carton back in the fridge, and I drink. It goes down smooth and cold, and I just swallow it all without stopping. When I'm done, I look at the empty glass in my hand. My parents got a truckload of glassware for their wedding. The glass in my hand is one of the set. It's older than me. Respect your elders, I think. But then I see her. She's laughing at me. She's inside the glass laughing at me. I throw the glass against the refrigerator and hear it crash. I look at the shards on the floor. It's like an invitation. I know the glass is made out of sand and I like walking on the beach. And I almost step towards the broken glass. But I don't. I think of blood. My blood. And I just kneel down and stare at the broken glass on the floor. Watching for any reflection of the moonlight outside the kitchen window. And waiting for my father to come downstairs. Because he can't sleep through anything. Would you like to have a seat? Can I lie on the couch? If you'd like. Seems like the proper thing to do. Go right ahead. You know, I should warn you that I've had my head measured by a close friend. And if you shrink it by so much as a millimeter, I'm taking you to court. I don't shrink heads. If I say I do, does that make me insane? It's not that simple. 
Nice couch. Where'd you get it? Bloomingdale's. Really? I would have thought there'd be some store that would sell special couches for psychiatrists. You know, it doesn't feel as good when you know anybody with a few bucks can get one. Tell me why you're here, Wallace. Well, it's either this or a straitjacket, I suppose. Why is that? Oh, come on, did my father tell you all this? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Well, I can't argue with that. You see, uh, I've been breaking glasses in the kitchen. Any particular reason? No, I like to live dangerously. You know, in perpetual fear of slicing the soles of my feet open. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but ever since they cut the umbilical cord, I've been obsessed with sharp things. Especially knives. I'm attracted to knives. I'm incredibly attracted to doctors with knives. Do you have a knife, doctor? No. You want to buy one? No. Oh. Tell me about your mother, Wallace. No, she was like Sylvia Plath, without the publishing contract. Do you remember much about her? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nope. Are you sure? Why are you asking me this? I mean, tell me, would you ask me this if my father weren't paying you? You're upset because your father made you come here. No. I'm upset because he didn't pick a prettier psychiatrist. Was your mother pretty, Wallace? Yeah, she was pretty. She's pretty pretty. She was pretty suicidal, now she's pretty dead. You know, Wallace, you don't have to say anything you don't want to. Okay. What are you thinking about, Wallace? 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 <laughs> Good movie. Yeah. I like the kissing stuff. I like when the girl died. Do you want to sit down here? Here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You want a Gigi fruit? No, I stick to your teeth. What, you want a mallow cup? Chocolate makes you break out. Mmm. That's in the bottle, the pink stuff. Oh, you don't want to know. Sure I do. Wouldn't ask if I didn't want to know. Well, it's Pepto-Bismol mixed with seltzer. What? See, I have this perpetually upset stomach, and drinking this helps. It's not that bad, actually. You want some? No, thanks. No? I'll pass. Such a nice day. <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad. I don't want to go back to school, do you? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just dying to sharpen my pencils and, and do tons of homework every night. Do you think eighth grade's going to be any different than seventh? No, no, no chance in hell. I think it's all the same. I, I don't think it matters. I think they just keep us in school until we're safely through our, uh, our growth spurts and our, <clears throat> our puberty confusion. And then they send us out to make the best of the rest of our lives, but... You know, we get so terrified of the real world that we pay some university to keep us for four more years or eight more years or whatever. You know. It all depends on how terrified you are. My grandmother's brother, he's 62. He's still taking classes up in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, if they keep you long enough to get comfortable when you're young, they've got you for life. Not me, that's for sure. Once I'm out, I'm out. I'm not going to college. No way. What are you going to do? 
Who knows? Sit on the beach and get a really solid tan. Watch a lot of movies. Dance. Sounds pretty stimulating, Victoria. Don't tease me. I wasn't. Yes, you were. I was not. I was, I was not teasing you. Why would I tease you? I don't know. You didn't like the kissing stuff? Huh? You know, in the movie. I don't know. Sure you do. I don't. I was getting candy. I missed it. Leave me alone. You want to try? Try what? That. What's that? Kissing. <laughs> With you? Yeah. Well, you mean now? Yeah. Um... Scared? Yeah, right. All right. All right, go ahead. Kiss me. You sure? Sure as Dinah. Dinah? Forget it. <laughs> oh, you kissed me already? Okay. <laughs> you didn't fade out. Nope. I think I love you, Victoria. Really? Yeah. What? What's wrong? What's wrong? You're too fast for me, Wallace. That's what's wrong. <laughs> This morning, especially for you. Thanks. Oh, you look wonderful. You're such a handsome thing. <laughs> it's delicious. Well, of course it is. Would I serve you anything but? The first batch went to Grandpa. It was so horrible. <laughs> So happy you came to visit us. I love to visit you guys. It's like sugar on my heart. It makes me feel so good. <laughs> Who's this? Ah! <laughs> That's Grandpa's second cousin, Jerry. <laughs> he just died. It's the last picture of him. It's taken two minutes before he went. He was at a wedding there, see? He was at his table, sitting between these two pretty young girls, and the photographer snapped his picture, and Jerry was joking and flirting. <laughs> he was like that, Jerry. He was so bad. <laughs> and two minutes later, he just shut his eyes. Gone. Nice picture. Yeah. <clears throat> Grandma, can I ask you something stupid? If it makes you happy, I don't see why not. What was your first kiss like? My first kiss? You really have faith in my memory, don't you? <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Anything ever. Oh, well, it was with Grandpa. And Your we... first kiss was with Grandpa? Of course. We were studies in high school. Oh, you know. Oh. I never really thought about it. Oh, sure. Was it, um... Was it nice? I was petrified. <laughs> but he made me feel comfortable. I mean, I'm still petrified, but in a comfortable sort of a way. Mm. Comfortably petrified. Mm. It was a sad.
Saturday night. And it was in 1936. It was in Wentworth Park, just four blocks from here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I, I remember thinking that he kissed really wonderfully. I mean, we were just in high school. And kissing him made me feel that. It's like the movie stars must have felt. <laughs> I mean, look, I nearly fell over backwards. I was so taken away. And then I got suspicious. Asking myself, where did he learn to kiss like that? Hmm? So, when I asked him... He... <laughs> you asked him? Sure, I asked him, and he told me that... He said... <laughs> he said that he had been practicing on his pillow for nearly five years. <laughs> so, well, that made me feel better. Besides, with those eyes, how could I help but believe him? Hmm? I was 16. The generations are different. Yeah. I mean, each generation changes. Either it improves or it declines. Hmm? Yeah. The trouble is, you can't tell which is which. I mean, what your generation calls decline, mine calls improvement. Uh, <laughs> it's confusing. Well. Along with everything else. Well, <clears throat> don't waste your time thinking about it. I will say one thing. Hair is important. It's, it's secondary, but important nonetheless. Find a girl with hair. Hair? Hmm. I mean, I, I can't run my fingers through Grandpa's hair. All I can do is rub his scalp, which some say brings good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in your Buddha's scalp, Grandma. Oh, well. <laughs> Grandpa is certainly not Buddha, and I'm so... Certainly not lucky. Did you ever miss mommy? My Mother's Turtlenecks, by Wallace Kirkman, age 16. My mother loved my father, hated her neck. She thought it was too fleshy or something. If I hated my neck, I'd have it removed, but... <laughs> my mother never trusted doctors, so she wore turtlenecks. All the time. In every picture we have of her, she's wearing a turtleneck. She had turtlenecks in every color of the rainbow. She had blacks. She had whites. She had grays, plaids, polka dots, checks. Stripes, Mickey Mouse, she even had sort of a mesh turtleneck. Can't picture her without a turtleneck on. Although according to Freud, I try to every moment of every day. There's a photograph of me when I was a baby wearing one of my mother's turtlenecks. <laughs> Swimming in one of my mother's turtlenecks is more like it. It's, it's a bald head and a big shirt. It's very erotic and an edible shirt wear sort of way. It's a rare photograph because I'm smiling. I didn't smile all that much during most of my childhood. I'm taking lessons now, trying to learn again, but you know, it takes time. I, uh, I stopped smiling when my mother stopped wearing turtlenecks. I came home from a typical day in the second grade to find her taking a bath in her own blood in the kitchen floor. Her turtleneck was on the kitchen table, so it wouldn't come between her neck and her knife. 
I understood then why she'd worn turtlenecks all along. To stop the blood from flowing. To cover the wound that was there all along. They tried to cover the wound when they buried her with one of her favorite turtleneck dresses on. But it didn't matter. It was just an empty hole by then. My mother wasn't hiding inside. She wrote a note before she died asking to be cremated. And I asked my father why she wasn't. And he said, my mother was two women. And the one he loved would have been scared of the flames. I look at that photograph of little me inside my mother's shirt all the time. <laughs> it's as close as I can get to security. And there are no pictures of me inside mother's womb. But her turtleneck is close enough. so sad. It's really sad. And it's so true. I mean, there's so much of you in there. I mean, if I didn't know you, I'd know you after I read this. You know what I mean? I think it's really talented work. What's it for? For? Yeah, I mean, is it for English class or oh, something? Oh, no, I just sort of wrote it. It's not for anything. Well, I mean, it's for me, I guess. You should submit it to the school newspaper. I bet they'd publish it. I don't think I want the whole school reading this. Why not? I mean, you shouldn't be ashamed. Or... No, I'm not ashamed. It just seems a little, uh, I don't know, sensationalist, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. So, what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. Go see a movie. Sure. Or to stay here. Sure. Well, which one? <laughs> Whichever. Come on, I'm horrible with decisions. So am I. Sarah, you're the valedictorian of our class, for Christ's sake. If you can't make a decision, who can? Um, okay. Do you want to stay here? Yeah. Okay, let's stay here then. So. Oh, you want something to drink? Um, sure. Okay. What do you want, some, uh, some wine or a screwdriver? Oh, you mean something to drink? I don't drink. Oh, uh, do you mind if I have something to drink? Oh, no. Don't let me stand in your way. Okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, be right back. In vino veritas. Who's this? It's my mother. She was beautiful. She was okay. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna light a candle, okay? Um, sure. <laughs> my great grandfather was lighting his pipe with this lighter when he died. It's a zippo. It's pretty sharp, huh? It's very nice. to warm up. I guess my great-grandfather forgot to refill it before he died. <laughs> it's just as well, really, because I, you know, I hate candles. So cliché. Do you, uh, you want to listen to some music? Sure. Okay. What do you like? Um, anything. You like James Taylor? Sure. Okay, let me just find the tape. You know, I don't know where I put... I think I might have left it out in the car. I That's okay. I mean, we don't need music. Do we? No, I, uh... Guess not. Well... What was your mother like, Wallace? What was she like? Yeah. 
like Sylvia Plath without a Fulbright scholarship. What do you mean? I mean, sh I don't know what I mean. I'm 16. Would you mind if I kissed you? The wine works fast. No, I do. Can I? Um, can't we just talk for a while? I don't want to talk. I want to kiss. I really would feel better. Come on. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe I should go. What? I mean, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Don't you like me? Very much, Wallace, but I don't want this just to be a lot of... I don't know, stupidity, just kissing and nothing else. I mean, I wanted to talk to you, you know? Yeah, whatever. Wallace, don't do that. No, just go, okay? What? You said maybe we should leave, so leave. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with this right now. But... But nothing, just go, okay? Uh, fine. <laughs> Bye, Wallace. See ya. I'm sorry, this didn't work out. I'll see you in school on Monday, okay? Okay, bye. Uh, I'd like to make a song request and a dedication. Something in the way she moves. By James Taylor. <laughs> you don't. It's, it's on greatest hits. You see, I'm trying to right a wrong, as they say. I don't know. It's an expression. Well, look, do you have anything like, uh, uh, I don't know, like, like Cat Stevens or something? You know, something close to James Taylor, just one man and, and a guitar, that sort of thing? <sighs> Only top 40. Uh, who's in the top 40? Is there anybody named James? No, it's not really appropriate. Okay, well, um, could I just make a dedication then? Yeah, no, I know, I know. I know, I know it's supposed to be for a song, but you don't seem to have the song I need. So if I could just make a dedication, and then you can maybe not play anything for about three minutes in place of the song I need, and that way... Hello? I wanted to apologize. You don't have to. Yeah, I do. Okay. So? <laughs> it's funny, you know. Sometimes I wish I were like a little kid again when sorry was okay, you know? Yeah, well, we're not little kids anymore, Wallace. We're not? No, we're not. We're not. We're certainly not. Okay, well, I was just, um, I was acting very stupid before, you know, I was being very stupid. I was, uh, I was being very... Stupid? Yeah. And it was wrong. Because, well, it made you... I don't know, it was unfair, and, um, uh, I apologize. Okay. And I thought maybe we could try again. Again? Yeah, I thought maybe I could come in. Um, my parents are sleeping. Oh, well, I could try to be quiet. It's kind of late. How about you just come back to my place and we just start from the beginning? Wallace. All right, I know it sounds like a stupid idea, Sarah, but trust me, all right? I know what to do. I'll behave. We don't have to kiss. We can just talk. We can have a conversation, and then you could go. Or we could just sit in silence for a while. We don't even have to talk. I don't think that's a very good idea, Wallace. Hey, sir, all I'm asking for is another chance, all right? Don't make me beg. There's no need to beg, Wallace. I just don't think... No, no, that's all right. I'll beg. I'm begging, sir. Will you give me another shot? Wallace. 
I'll be good. Wallace. Look at the moon, Shara. Oh. <laughs> it's full. It's romantic. Wallace, get off your knees. Ah. It's all right. I kind of like it down here. You know, I was going to bring a guitar and maybe serenade you. But I don't sing. I don't play the guitar either, but I did have romantic thoughts. It's very sweet, Wallace. <sighs> I really should go back inside. Mm, yeah, I understand. You know, you know, I, I tried to dedicate a song to you on the radio. Something by James Taylor. They didn't have any James Taylor. Can you believe that? It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny world. Sure is. Yeah, well, um, you wouldn't want to try again next weekend. It's like a movie or something, or. Wallace. I understand. I'm sorry, Wallace. Oh, yeah, no. You know, I'm sorry. Are you gonna stay down there? Uh, for a little while, yeah. If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Thanks. Sure, yeah, well, okay. Good night, Wallace. Good night. since I've seen you. About five years. Yes. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, I'll bet. Would you like to have a seat? No. Okay, then. What's on your mind? Hmm, lots. Uh, when I came here last time, it was because my father made me, but now I'm here because I want to talk to you. You see, I'm, I'm confused. My mother makes me a sandwich for lunch. I take it. She, in turn, slits her throat. Now, after the funeral, when I go back to school for the first time, my father makes me a sandwich for lunch. Or at least he tries, so as not to screw up my daily routine any more than it already has been. And I'm thinking, all day while I'm at school, I'm thinking that he's going to be lying on the kitchen floor when I get home. It's the same thing, you see, because I took the sandwich. If I didn't take, I think they'd be okay, but I take, and that kills them. So, when I get home from school, and he wasn't lying on the kitchen floor, but instead sitting in his study alive, I was disappointed. I was let down because my system didn't work. You know, my system failed me. Everything was failing me. And when I expected my father to fail me, he failed me by not failing me. You know, he was just sitting there in his study alone, deserted by the woman he loved and planned to, you know, move to Florida with, and he can manage to go on living and stay alive. How? And I mean, Victoria, this 12-year-old this girl, she's sitting there, she's practically begging me to kiss her. I mean, I mean she would have been on her knees in a second in more ways than one. You know, it's, and that's how it seemed. And finally, I let down. I actually do what she's been asking me to do. I kiss her. Bang. All of a sudden, I'm too goddamn fast for her. You know, I, I told her I loved her, and she runs off skipping. And the next week, she's kissing somebody else. And I heard he got up her shirt. And he's not too fast. I'm too fast. So I get this reputation that scares the hell out of me, because not only will no decent girls look at me, but, you know, I can't even think about any of the indecent girls, because I'm scared to death of having to live up to my own reputation. All right, so now, when my big mistake has always been talking too much, I finally, I meet this girl I really like. I mean, she's, she's bright, she's pretty, she's actually nice and caring. So I try not to screw it up by talking too much. I go right for the kiss. She won't ever see me again, because I didn't talk too much. You know, I just, I can't win. They desert. Women desert. And I know it all stems back to my coward mother. And if she hadn't offered herself, I would have no problems. But what I'm trying to say is, Doctor, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do about all this. And it's my life. So could you, uh, 
Can I give me some advice or something, doctor? 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 Tyrannosaurus Rex by Wallace Kirkman, age 18. Freud said that castration anxiety is one of the strongest influences on the development of a male child's character. That the son suffers from anxiety because he's worried that the father will castrate him. When my father carves a Thanksgiving turkey, I always excuse myself and hide in the bathroom. A recurring dream of mine involves these fears, castration and thanksgiving. In the dream, a bunch of boy sopranos are sitting around a table eating turkey. Without chewing. They just swallow a leg. And a breast. And a wing. I hold Freud responsible for many of my dreams, including one I call Tyrannosaurus Rex. See, I always wanted to be a dinosaur when I was young. Younger. I have a lot in common with Tyrannosaurus. We both walk on two legs, we both eat meat, and we both occasionally answer to the nickname King of the Tyrant Lizards. Anyhow, the recipe for this dream is something like, uh, two parts Oedipus Rex, two parts Freud, and, uh, 19 parts me. Now, at the beginning of the dream, the eventual parents are both 13 years old and Jewish. Now, they get bar mitzvahed and, uh, bat mitzvahed on the same day and sleep with each other on the same night. Kids today. God bless him. On with a dream. The, uh, the girl gets pregnant, as girls will do. Now, she wants to have an abortion so the baby won't get in the way of the seventh grade. But neither of the partners got any cash for their mitzvahs. Only savings bonds. Lots of savings bonds. So, they pack several pairs of underwear and they go to stay with a girl's grandmother, a mentally ill fortune teller from Boston. Now she tells them to get rid of the baby right after it's born because uh, her rented crystal ball says that the son will fight with the father and get to know the mother in a carnal sort of way. <clears throat> so, when the baby is born, they immediately sell it onto the black market. They use the cash to pay a few months worth rent on a Beacon Street apartment. Now the father starts to take boxing lessons. The mother spends her spare time in their spare apartment reading spare Japanese literature. And they earn rent money and grocery money and boxing lesson money and Japanese book money by becoming kitty porn stars. <laughs> At this point, the dream leaps ahead about 17 years. The, uh, the father is now a very popular amateur boxer who can make his nose bleed on cue. The mother is preparing to commit ritual suicide. She's extremely depressed because she knows she can never be Japanese regardless of how hard she tries. Now, the son is a boxing necrophiliac who masturbates. A lot. One morning he wakes up, masturbates, goes to see a fortune teller who just happens to be his mentally ill great-grandmother. Now she tells him that he's going to fight with his father and get to know his mother in a carnal sort of way. This news shocks and upsets him so much he leaves home, packing several pairs of underwear. He sneaks into a local morgue, and he finds himself playing the newly dead game, and winning. <laughs> he, uh, he makes small talk with, or rather to, his, uh, his real mother, who spent the morning committing seppuku. Hari, Hari. Well, she looks like a nice Jewish girl, even though her bowels are nowhere to be seen, so he, uh, he makes love with her. To her. <laughs> then... And then he, uh, he goes to the local gym to put in some fighting time. He picks a fight with his father. The bell rings. The father's nose starts to bleed instantaneously before the son even touches him, which understandably confuses the son. This confusion leaves him wide open for the father's knockout punch. The father uses the cap from a bottle of Lysol pine cleanser to, uh, to revive the son, then offers to buy him a beer at the local tavern. They get to the tavern. The son excuses himself goes to the bathroom, locks the door, starts to masturbate, immediately goes blind. Coincidentally, it just so happens to be Thanksgiving.
I've been having this dream every night for the past two months. It's always pretty much the same. Except sometimes it's in color and sometimes it's in black and white. And once, the black and white version was colorized. <laughs> Which pissed me off because, you know, it's more or less my life story. And who wants their life story colorized? Psychiatrist write to school a note saying essentially that if I lived with another person, I'd probably kill them. Seriously? No, not really. But you know, the school believed it. You must be tired. Why? Well, you're on stage practically the whole time. It's an important part. And you were so good. <laughs> I'm no, really. I mean, the whole thing was. Oh, it was. Oh, it was beautiful. The choreographer's pretty talented. I mean, who the hell would ever think to do Catcher in the Rye as a ballet? The choreographer would. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know, but wow. I never knew there was so much stuff about lesbians in Catcher in the Rye. It's all in the subtext. Yeah, yeah, but I think, you know, I think having you, I mean, having a woman as Holden Caulfield really made everything quite clear. I'm glad you liked it. You're very cute, Wallace. Me? Yes, you. I'm really drawn to you, you know? Sure. What are you waiting for? Huh? Kiss me. Are you sure? How's that? That was nice. You want to sleep together? What? Do you want to make love? With you? Yes, with me. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Sure. What do we do? Are you a virgin? Technically, no. What do you mean, technically? Well, um, what is, what is the definition of male virginity? Is that a rhetorical question? A male virgin is a male who's never had his thing inside of a female's thing, right? Anybody still calling it a thing is probably a virgin. I know that much. <laughs> right, well, when I was born, I had a thing. Uh -huh. you know, it, was, you know, it was a very tiny ball thing, but it was a thing nonetheless, and I... I entered this world through my mother's thing, you know, the infamous uh, <clears throat> tunnel of love. Mm -hmm. So my thing has been inside of a female's thing, although it had to share the space of the rest of my body. I guess pretty much all men are born non-virgins, really. The only exceptions would be men, you know, born cesarean style. You're saying you lost your virginity with your mother? <laughs> yeah. You're pretty weird, Wallace. <laughs> Thanks. So, will this be your first time having sex with someone outside your immediate family? You got me there, yeah. I'm honored. I'm terrified. It's simple. Don't worry, you'll be fine. And before we get started, do you have any protection? No. Here. <sighs> Take this. You really come prepared. I don't want to even joke around with AIDS, you know? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. You remember when AIDS was just a dietetic candy? <laughs> There's a stock that must have done real well, huh? Can you picture the president of the company right before the end? Just call the damn thing Dexatrim. which is superb for a disease. You, you don't have to make jokes, Wallace. Everything is going to be fine. Better. Fine. Do you know I was nervous? Thought I was covering it up pretty well. A woman knows. Can I ask you something? Yeah. What can you possibly see in me? What do you mean? 
I mean, how do I end up here with you? You're, you're, you're a beautiful senior. I'm a nervous little freshman. You've got great eyes. I do? Really intelligent eyes. Like, they've seen a lot. That's what they look like. You're here with me because of my eyes? Yeah. Sort of. The brochures don't do college justice. Let's get on the bed, Wallace. Let me just flip the lights. Oh, leave them on. I want to see you. Uh, you keep the lights on with a guy named Biff who pumps iron and gasoline. The Jew from Jersey, you do it in the dark. Why do you wear so many layers? Wearing layers of clothing keeps you warmer than one thick garment. But it's not cold out. All right, so I hate my body. I'm too skinny. Is that such a crime? You've got a nice body. <laughs> In the dark, maybe. Oh. You are so sweaty. I want to see you, Wallace. I want to see all of you. Can't you turn the lights on? The lights go on, I go in the closet. <laughs> you have a candle or something, at least. No, oh, I hate candles. Mm. Am I doing okay? You're doing fine, just fine. Oh. Why did you can cross the road? This isn't the time, Wallace. I'm sorry. try to picture what this would be like you know I always try to imagine I, now it's real you know it's actual I just I slept with an older woman I just slept with an older woman who dances Billy Corkscrow would never believe it hmm? Billy Corkscrow is this, this kid I grew up with he talked about sex all the time he was like a little Mr. Know-it-all you know he told me everything <laughs> he told me The only way to really satisfy a woman was to put Spanish fly in her drink. And if you were dating a girl who spoke French instead of Spanish, you had to get your Spanish fly translated. And, and that, that could only be done at the French embassy, and it cost a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> and we probably should be better off paying professionals. <sighs> Last I heard, he moved to Arizona. I heard he couldn't get a date for his senior prom. You have to meet my little sister. Is this your mother? Yeah. She's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? For asking. I don't mind. And I've lived without her for so long, it's not that bad, really. What was she like? Like Sylvia Plath without talent. She killed herself? Yeah. When I was six. That's too bad. How'd she kill herself? You really want to know? Yeah. Oh, if you don't want to talk about it, though. No, no, I do, I do. It's, it's just that it freaks most people out. She, uh, she slit her throat with a kitchen knife. Oh, God. I never understand why people don't just take pills and die painlessly. Well, I think that, um... I think that if you hate yourself enough to want to die... It's like if you wanted to kill someone else, you know? If you hate someone, you want them to die painfully. 
I don't know. I, I guess that's what it is. I know that pain belongs in there somewhere. So how did you deal with all that? I, I, I mean, how did you get through it? I used to break glass. Huh? I used to break glasses in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> I don't know, it helped a little. It was destructive, you know, but, you know, I don't know, to use the pain. How sad. Nah, it's no big deal. I guess it kind of made me who I am today, really. <laughs> I mean, who knows how I would have been if she was still alive, you know, it might be somebody I'd hate. I mean, you know, sure, there are, there are times I'd kill to have her back. Just to, uh, I don't know, show her something I've written or talk to her about my thoughts or just even see her smile when I did something silly. What are you thinking about? I don't know. About my mother. And about how you listen to me talk. And... About how I'd really love to kiss you right now. So why don't you? Well... Nina, um... Did your sister, did she tell you... Oh, I know. Yeah, you and my sister were together. It doesn't bother you? A little. Well, not much. I mean, you were drunk, right? What? All you did was kiss, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all it was, you know. Yeah, it was, just, it was like a few drunken kisses. A few? She said one. Well, it was, you know, it was a few within the one. But, you know, our lips never parted, so technically, you know, it was just pff, one. Okay. Well? Well, what? Well, kiss me. Yeah, I think I love you. I know, I know it sounds stupid. Is that okay? Sure. I'm gonna kiss you now, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you sure that we should be doing this? Why not? Well, what about your girlfriend? What about her? Well, I don't feel right about that. <clears throat> I'm drunk. You're drunk. We don't know what we're doing, right? Right? <laughs> right? Right? Right. 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 So? So, give me a kiss. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined it. Mommy. I fell in love. Really, for the first time. I mean, it wasn't romance for the sake of romance. It was... It was romance for the sake of somebody. Nina. Nina listened. And I got scared. I ran away to somebody else. What do I do? Mommy, it hurts. 
I want... I need my mother. I'm not asking for much. All I want is to go back and just take the knife away from her. Just go back and just take the knife away from her. All I want to do is change history. countless science fiction stories about time travel the moral is always quite clear when you go back in time if you so much as step on an ant the course of history will change drastically you know, don't try to change history it's dangerous well my experience trying to change history isn't really dangerous just a waste of time it's a frustrating, futile exercise. You exert yourself, you use up boundless energies, and everything stays exactly the same. With small technical differences, perhaps. And one more dead end. If you take a razor away from a man who wants to kill himself, he'll still kill himself. He just won't be clean-shaven. The will is all that matters. If the will is there, I should dwell on the future. Dwelling on the past is hopeless. Yeah. Hey there. Sit down. What's wrong? Sit down. Okay. What's the matter? You deserve better. Huh? I'm not good enough for you. What are you talking about? You're the best. I'm the worst. You should hate me. Why? You don't want to know. What don't I want to know? 
I've been with somebody else. What? I was with somebody else. Who? Wendy. Wendy? I'm gonna be sick. Regina! Women dessert. Don't you dare break that glass. I'll turn right around and I won't come back. You came back. You should hate me. Oh, I do. And I also happen to love you. And I'm not gonna lose you without a fight. through this. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be easy. I know. You betrayed me. I know. I know. You may have been scared or whatever, but I swear to God, if you ever do this to me again, both you and her, whoever she is, you're going to be lying on the street. Okay? Okay. Get back. Just do you want to work through this? Okay, then we will. God, you came back. Don't you ever do that to me again. Do you understand? Come back. And you really love her. I swear. At least I think I do. No, I know I do. <laughs> and I was running away from her. I was so terrified that she'd leave that I, I, I wanted to leave first so I wouldn't have to deal with that pain, you know? I mean, I wanted to get caught with this other girl, Grandma. I had to tell her about it right away. And it all made sense when I told her. You know, too much sense. She said she was going to be sick. And she ran out of the room. And something in me just clicked. You know, something in me had been expecting it. Had been expecting her to leave. And it made sense. And it was complete. And she came back. Hmm. And that's really threw me for a loop. And I said right then, I said, there is no way I'm going to lose this girl. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep her. Because she came back. And it scares the hell out of me that I almost lost her because Mommy killed herself. I mean, my mother deserts me for whatever reasons. She almost makes me lose the one girl I've ever really loved. You can't blame her until you die, you know. What? Your mother. You've got to be responsible for something, eventually. A dead mother does not give you carte blanche for a lifetime of screwing up. Well, you can do it. You can screw up. Go right ahead. But you've got to stop blaming her. Or you will spend the rest of your life fooling yourself and you will die a blind man. Understand? Hmm? I think so. Not sure. That's all right. You're still young. <laughs> Don't they feed you at school? You're so thin. They're feeding me fine, Grandma. Oh, oh, oh. Who's this? This is Gertrude Mosbaum. 
Yeah, we grew up together. Yeah, she just passed. This picture was taken three weeks before she died. beautiful dress. Thank you. 